My larger mission is really about empowering black women and using technology to do that. This is Trust NPR. Being out here today, having this chance to share my business with so many people is incredibly affirming and exciting. Um, to have this opportunity, especially with so many women who understand the problem we're trying to solve, it's exciting to be able to do that. And I think tomorrow I'll just feel gratified to have had this chance. Given how hyper-connected our world is today, it doesn't make sense that the beauty needs of women of color are still being treated as an afterthought. So on one hand, you have women asking, how can I find the right stylist for my hair type and texture? And you have talented stylists asking, how can I let these women know I'm out there? The answer, swivel beauty. We can take a woman from looking to booking the right stylist for her in just a few minutes. She can enter search criteria geared towards her hair type and texture, pull up a list of curated vetted options of stylists both in salons and stylists that come to her, read reviews from women just like her, and book an appointment all in one place. It's a complete end-to-end -end experience, and at the end of appointments, our stylists check out our customers through our portal, so we're generating revenue on every appointment booked, as well as key data insights about our users' purchasing power. Our community and culture can participate in the advancements in tech. I think it being at conferences like this, I think Afrotech has done a really great job at bringing together such an inspiring group of people who are one, aspiring to get into tech, and others who have already done it. And I think it just bridges that gap of what it takes to really create this career. And I think being around people that want to help each other and support each other in their growth in this community is the number one thing that we can do. We can solve our own problems, but come together to do that as a community. So basically, airline travelers are happy with their flying experiences than parents are with their kids' schools. This is Trust NPR. Hi, I'm Shawnee Dow, and I'm the founder of POSIT. I think part of what's been beautiful about Afrotech is just seeing the way in which black people interpret our world and therefore how we're going to make the world better and enter into the space based on our perspective as black people. Schools have hundreds, sometimes thousands of parents in them. And for the most part, parents aren't that satisfied. Just over half of parents are satisfied with their child's school, and that's fewer than airline travelers. So basically, airline travelers are happy with their flying experiences than parents are with their kids' schools. So I think sometimes tech is, feels distant and like something we can't understand, but when we're passionate, and we've seen this for multiple entrepreneurs, that when we're passionate about an idea, we find ways to figure out and learn tech. So I created POSIP. POSIP uses a multilingual texting chatbot and automated emails to give parents a weekly pulse check and then schools an actionable automated weekly report. We ask simple questions. Are you happy with your child's school this week? What praise or feedback do you have? And then we turn that into an actionable report for schools. Schools are swimming in data. What they need is data that they can then turn to action. I think being at Afrotech has been um a good illuminator about why and how we can participate in the tech sector even more. So thinking about POSIP, the company I've started, uh, thinking about tomorrow what it means for me, I'll both go back to it with, a, with an increased passion and fire for the ways in which I uniquely am able to build the company based on my perspective as a black woman and a mother. Um, and then additionally, having the opportunity to be in front of so many folks, both investors and connectors and people who can help me build POSIP is what part of what Afrotech being here today will mean for me tomorrow. What else is there? You know, what if I just take that next step? This is Trust NPR. Over the next few years, technology will continue to increase and the labor that will be required isn't necessarily being taught to minority kids, whether they're black or brown founders um, or high school or middle school kids. In my opinion, everyone doesn't need to learn how to code, but I think that we need to start teaching our kids to be more curious, um, really, sort of embracing this idea of like, you know, what else is there? You know, what if I just take that next step? At Drop, I work with a team who is extremely obsessed with the way that people will discover and interact with information when they're no longer carrying an iPhone in their pocket. The browser has always been the gateway to most information discovery, emails, and other things that we needed to locate. The problem that my team saw was that there was no way to properly do this inside of a VR or AR headset. So we simply asked ourselves, how will we search and interact with information in immersive computing environments? Drop allows you to search and interact with the web in addition to sending emails and also collaboration features. Being on stage and discussing Drop and what we're building was truly the first time, and I joked about this, was the first time I presented Drop in an audience full of, you know, so much melon, <laughs> to be honest. Um, being up there, I think, if anything, it was a representation that, you know, there are black founders who are still building software companies that we are out there. Right now, we're currently finishing our seed investment round of $2.4 million, 
We've been extremely lucky to bring on one of the top VR investors, HTC, in addition to other leading investors in the space. We're currently looking for that capital to look at an enterprise relationship, increase adoption amongst consumers, and also do more research and development in augmented reality. Being up there wasn't about me. It wasn't about you know our company and what we're doing. It was more sort of representation of you know what can be done when innovation actually meets black founders. I like to think about it as TurboTax for credit disputes. This is Trust NPR. With Dispute Dot, users could log on to our service. We then analyze a copy of their credit report, identifying all the negative items and the inaccuracies. Our patent pending user engine then asks a series of user friendly questions compiling a custom letter as you answer each one of those questions. Now we made our process as short as four questions. And at the end of this process, our system directly sends the letters off to the creditors and the credit bureaus on your behalf, ultimately improving your credit scores. Today we'll just, just uh, really focus on how big of a scale the opportunity that we have with our company, with our new startup. Being able to, to take part in the, the Afrotech um, you know, startup hub and you know, ultimately pitch in this competition and be able to win this competition, that'll mean to me is, is that people see and they understand the need for financial literacy in this country, especially in our communities. Now the market potential is huge. There's more than $10 billion that is spent each year with companies handwriting letters and sending them off to the credit bureaus on your behalf. Now I don't know about you guys, but that's a lot of money writing letters. So one of our biggest advantages is that we have partnerships with car dealerships, with mortgage companies, with banks, and what we do for them is we take their unqualified applicants, we turn them into qualified applicants, and return them to the customer, ultimately increasing their revenue. So there's lots of things that are going on in the world and there's ways to simplify processes. So I just you know, really encourage to really find something that they can kind of wrap their hands around and make it an easier process, you know, for servicing people in the world.